It is warm. Hang on. Okay. Turn on my microphone. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way. It's hot. It was cold this morning, so I had my sweater on. I was doing a few things, but now it's uh, that's better. Now it's warm up with the sun. I'm gonna check audio. It's just in the uh, office there. I was. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the guy Ross Jacobs. Good horseman. Puts out good videos. Back here, make sure audio is working. Testing one, two, three. That sounds good. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, hello. All right, let's pause that. Anyways, I was over on Ross's channel. You can check that out. He's put out a recent video about working with the reins. Good video. And uh, so it's nice to be able to have a discussion on YouTube. Now I know what you guys feel like. <laughs> I don't comment on many videos. <laughs> Uh, but Ross was really quick to get back to me, which I love. I advocate that all the time. I try to respond to every comment, although I don't uh, get to it in a timely manner so much. Okay, we're going to do some hoof stuff, hoof trimming. You guys are far away because I need to bring a horse in first. Um, I'm going to bring in Ruli. Uh, she's last to trim today. And uh, I, as you can see, I put a hay bag down. Um, so it's another option. Uh, for my horses, I don't really do it for really. I think it might be kind of a nice thing for her to just stand around and she'll be facing that way, which makes it easier. Hopefully she won't want to shuffle around too much, um, but it'll also be a challenge as well because she's got to face that way, not that way towards her buddies. Um, but that is one of the reasons why I put a window here. So it's not just a wall. She wanted to go and look up there. Probably see just, I mean, there are so many squirrels. Anyways, I need to go get a horse. I need a horse, otherwise this is a useless presentation, isn't it? So we're back. Hello, Shirley. Love the new area. Thanks. Okay, um, we'll be back in two minutes or so. Maybe less. Got to go get a horse. So hopefully you guys can still hear me. It's a wireless mic. It should travel over towards the cameras. I'm not going that. Um, You're ch chitty chatty, aren't you? Want to come hang out with me? Give me a trip. Uh, let's see, let's take you up, yeah, this way, good girl, and then I shall set you free in the arena. <clears throat> okay, we're coming back, I'll be in frame in the next 10 seconds. Come along, rules, in you go. Here's a horse that doesn't care about this place. So that's nice to see. Um, I've probably said it too many times now. I don't uh, tie horses up if I can help it. I like that. Um, I have to pay attention to them. I like that. See, it's opposite of what you generally hear about. Okay, let's talk about trimming, getting started a little bit. I really, if anybody's going to do, you're going to do your own hooves and stuff. I recommend getting a set of chaps or farrier's apron, whatever these things are called, leg protectors, pants protectors. They're good. They protect your pants. And once in a while they protect your legs if a horse wants to drag a foot back or something like that or 
but mostly because hooves are dirty. And uh, a good set of gloves is really good. So I have no idea if you guys, I think really is just gonna stay there. I don't think she'll come up with me. I don't have that much draw with her. All right. Okay, we got a couple of people here. Hello, everybody. Andrew's here from Montana. Hello, Andrew. Sue, hello, Sue. Oh, the comments disappeared on me and I got my gloves on so I can't touch the screen. Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. I'll do some front feet. Um, really, stop dragging this thing around. That's not cool. Maybe I should anchor this thing in. I like to have it loose so that I can sort of kick it around a bit. If I want a horse to move over or do something, I'll just move it around. And it's, a, it's sort of a cheat, but it's a good cheat, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, all horses like to eat. This is a two inch hay bag um, to make it easier. I'm not gonna hang it on the wall because I like my walls. So, but I might make a modification here because this thing moves around a lot when she drags it. But we'll see what happens as I pick up her feet. So, um, I, uh, <laughs> really, what do I do with you? I can't have you chucking this thing around. Would you just take little bits out? Um, I have a few people that sort of pop in and say that they want to see more horsey play videos. And I'll probably put it in the comments too, but I have to say, you know, I get it. I like watching horses play as well, but those horses wouldn't be playing if we weren't taking care of their feet at all. You would just see horses stand around doing nothing because their feet would hurt too much. So this is a big deal. This is really, really important, taking care of hooves and understanding you may not want to do it yourself. So, you know, in such a case, don't worry, don't watch it. But these videos are important for those people that do want to learn. So for the every once in a while, people that appear unhappy, <laughs> relax. It's all good. This is important. Okay, really, how about a foot or two? So we're gonna clean her feet out real quick, see how she looks. And I'll bring you guys over in a second here. Um, but uh, there's, there's, uh, there's not a lot to the process of cleaning. You're really just trying to get out the stuff that's stuck in there. And, uh, you know, checking the foot as you go, making sure it's healthy at the same time. And uh, I'd still say, you know, there's some caution to be had. You don't want to um, dig or do anything too rough. They're sensitive on their feet like we are. And I think that there's some part of them that sort of can feel maybe a little bit ticklish in some spots or just sensitive in others because they have bad feet for something. So really it's got some pretty good feet. Uh, been working on fixing them. Uh, from a couple of things. And so that's nice and clean. I'll bring you guys over for the other one so you can see what's going on. Cleaning feet is something you want to do well, pretty regularly. Look at her. She's already ready for me to, to clean it up. Thanks, Ruby. Uh, you guys can see this? I hope so. I've got to turn the camera around for sure. This is not going to fly. So I generally just start with just scraping away and see what I can find underneath here. And I'll work my way upwards. Some people say always go down. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, just don't dig in and don't make a, you know, don't be really hard about it. So I scrape away at the frog quite a bit with my hoof pick to see what sort of looks like it's flaking off and it's kind of old and stuff. Um, and then I give it a good brush and so we'll see what we can do here for her. Yeah, so a bit of a old frog. No idea if you guys can see that. I gotta turn the camera around, switch cameras. But a bit of an old frog. Some of this stuff is just ready to come off, which is fine. We can help that out. We don't need to peel off much though. It's a very strong and firm frog. I'm checking for firmness to make sure it doesn't get all squishy. Shape is not bad. Um, She's actually got some nice depth to her feet. I'm quite happy. Uh, and, uh, so let's get started. Let's see if she asks for anything. Sometimes horses are pretty smart. They'll ask for a foot. I'm gonna go back to the original foot. And uh, because I can't see the screen, I have to 
switch the camera. So just give me a second while I do technical support at the same time. There we go. Okay. So now I can see whether or not you guys can actually see anything. And we'll get to work. Now, trimming is, um, it's as much of a science as it is an art, in my opinion. And uh, first thing I always do is I sort of check out what comes off or flakes off kind of easy and what's underneath because it's pretty grimy due to, due to uh, being a horse out and about. So I'm just going to give a little scrape here and there. If it feels really solid and, and whatnot, then there's really not much more to do. Her feet do feel quite solid. I'm not too worried. I think that uh, it looks good. I'm looking for coloring, whether I see bad color. Um, Ruby's had uh, a few issues here and there in regards to that. Um, but coming along very, very well. So I'm just checking out this seat of the corn area. Because sometimes these areas can get really, oop, can get really um, sort of built up with stuff. And as we can see there, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but uh, her bars are a little long. So I'm just going to take these down a little where I see this crack and then leave it at that. There's not much more to do there. Whoa, that's getting close. Okay, so she's bringing her back feet forward, probably because she'd like to move a little bit forward. But I'm mostly done with these bars. She doesn't have a lot to do. With the frog, I'm just going to lightly give a scrapings to see what can come off. But for the most part, it's just some ragged bits. So, nothing to worry about there. <clears throat> Let's give her a second. Hungry horse, eh? Oh, goodness. All right, so let's take a look at the feet. Now I'm gonna to have to switch cameras again because I need to explain this a little bit. But I don't know if you guys will be able to see this well, but it's not quite round or symmetrical at the toe. Now a lot of trimming advocates and practices out there uh, show that to trim, and fit the foot shape to where it should or could be from the front, like trimming from here. Well, you can't see that. Trimming from the top down to fit the shape and fit where it should be is the right way to do things. I don't agree with that at all. And I know there are quite a few people who are also heavily following the approach of, you can't trim a horse's foot from the outside. If you do, you're likely going to weaken it. Not always, but very likely. What we want to do is we want to trim from the bottom. So we can see here um, that, let's see. We can see here that, uh, hang on. Let me clean this up just a smidge. And you'll see it maybe clearer. But the uh, the sole of her foot sort of finishes here. But this comes all the way out here. So the gap between here and this natural wear pattern here and here is much uh, more narrow or closer than it is way over here, which is what we see when we look at it from the top, that she's got some corners. The reason she has corners is because she's not wearing off these parts here and here, which is totally normal. So we're just gonna help her out a bit. There's not a lot of height to remove at all. I'm, uh, I'm really just gonna be balancing her height like that. I don't really think she need, needs much on her heels. She's actually doing quite well for her heels. Just a little bit of balance there. The quarters can come off a little bit more. I think it looks like there's buildup to me. The reason I think there's buildup is because there's that dark line there. So, buildup of soul. Sorry about that. That's buildup of soul. That's sort of. I mean, we can take the wall down a little bit more there. 
and that's fine. This is right here. It's clear, right? I hope you guys can see this right here. It's clear, but here it's not. So we're just going to keep on growing this stuff out. When we do that, let's get rid of the outer wall. But we're not going to put her down far, like that down towards the ground, not put her down as a killer. So you see, I'm going to use I have two sides of a rasp. It's a rough side. That's the fine side. And so we're just going to smooth this. And I can't stress enough that when you're trimming hooves, take your time. You know, there's no rush to this. This is a sculpting process as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so we're going to get this a little bit more. I'm going to show you this a little closer, show you what I mean. Just do this to where my eye says it's good. Okay, now I haven't touched the toe at all here. And I do that on purpose. I don't touch this at all until the very, very end. And I want to see symmetry throughout here. You guys can see that? Really such a good sport. Let me give her a rest for a second, so be patient, everybody. We'll see if she offers a different foot. Okay, so um, you can see that's starting to come together a bit. And uh, I haven't trimmed anything from the front. Nothing from the front. Really is going to finish off this bag if I don't get going. Okay, let's get going. Ooh, this little trimming area sure is nice. I love it. Oh man, Lena's calling out. Okay, so let's do the other side. I'm using the rough side of my rasp. Again, I can take down these quarters a bit. Horses don't stand on their quarters much. Okay. That too can be rounded nicely. Nice little sculpting going on. And now you can see it didn't take too much for Ruli's feet, but she's got this perfect round foot. A really good candidate. She didn't start this way though. I've been trimming her for a little while, but she was in a bit of trouble in the beginning. But now I'm gonna work along that front bit and I'm just gonna sand it off essentially so that I can I can visually see because our eyes work very well with light. I can visually see that I've got something and I've taken off very little height. She doesn't need it. Frog looks good. I'm going to just quickly use my little nippers here and snip off this bit right here. Oh, hang on. In there, and just check that out. Make sure there's nothing rotting in here. Looks a little old. There we go. Open that up a bit. Remember that, that thrush is anaerobic. It lives because, because uh, oxygen isn't getting to it. So that's a done foot. I'm done and I haven't touched it from the front. Take a glove off so I can touch my screen. Ah, let's see. Okay. So as you can see, we now have roundy roundy. Really, can you move your face a little? That's in the way of the tripod. Thanks girl. So as you can see, that's pretty good. Much better. And no touchy touch from the front. We don't need to. Okay, in case you guys are wondering. Let's put this down low. So you see, she's still in a little bit of recovery mode. I don't know if the camera's gonna show this, but I can get her better from about here. It sort of deviates out just millimeters, but about here to here is really good growth. The rest, we need to do a little more. But other than that, she looks great. So happy, happy. Moving on, let's go to the other foot. Grab my tools, travel over. You guys can join me on this. <gasps> Look. Well, hopefully we don't run this guy over. <laughs> it's the Nature Channel too. So everybody who wants to see horsey play, you got to put up with Nature Channel as well. I'd say sorry, but I'm not. Look at this little guy. Where is he going? Maybe it's a girl. Just traveling along. Okay, back to those. Switch camera. 
I'll uh, transport this little critter out of here. Come here, tiny little critter. Look at how much of a little tiny ball he turns into when you touch him. It's the little tiny ball. Can you see that? Let's sort of see that. Okay, let's get him out of here. To the loo, little dude. To the leaves. All right, moving on. I saved a critter today. Hope you guys are happy. That's worth that's worth five bucks right there. Okay, tools. The other thing about these things is you want to get them. I'm not a big guy. these. I bought these because they fit. I didn't buy them because they were totally functional. I wish I had more pockets. And there's a magnet here. I think it's for nails, but I never use nails. So I wish this magnet was way, way stronger. Enough so that I could, I could chuck my rasp on here. See how it sort of sticks? Yeah, not really though. So really, can you please move forward? You've come way too far, way too far. All right, so let's get on with this. Let's get on with this. The rope's in the way, move that out of the way. As you can see, Ruli's a very good girl. Very, very good. Um, let's touch on, okay, can I use my wrist or something? I'm tired of taping, taking my gloves off. I guess I can. Okay, real quick, guys, I'll show you something. See, his back foot has got this chip. See that? No big deal. Everybody that says, ah, oh, my horses are chipping and flaring and, well, if they're really flaring, it's a problem. But that outer wall coming off a little bit like that, totally normal. You'll see. I mean, not what you want, but it's normal. No big deal. All right. Moving on to this foot. Can I have this foot, please, really? Thank you. She's such a good girl. Okay, so we don't have a lot different on this hoof. This hoof is about the same as the other hoof. So we'll grab one of my knives and just, again, we're just sort of scraping away to see what we see. Maybe make a change here and there. Oh, really? You're getting there, girl. You're getting there. So right here, I can sort of see she's got some buildup. And the reason I can see that there's this crack along the way but I don't see it going very far. So I'm really just gonna exfoliate a little, you guys can't really see that, can you? I'm really just gonna exfoliate along that crack a bit. And here I can see there's a deviation. But what I'm really worried about is her building up too much old sole here. Um, that can be detrimental, but it can be beneficial. So you sort of have to be able to make that judgment call. I'll just trim off this frog while I've got my knife out. Just these little bits and pieces. They're no big deal. But I don't need to make massive changes to the frog. Like some, you'll see some trims and they come along and they just indiscriminately just scrape off um, or cut off big pieces. Just totally indiscriminately. No rhyme or reason to it. Just that's what you do. Uh, it isn't what you do. I really just want to be able to check this frog out a little bit. I love the, the the shape of it. I'd like to see it get a little bigger. They were smaller before. They're getting a little bit bigger and they're much healthier. Not the color they used to be. <clears throat> I'm looking for little cracks just like Lena's where I can see that some stuff can come off. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's check her other bar. I'm just sort of scraping along. There's not a lot of height that I'm taking off. Not a lot of height. We don't need to remove height. She's good for height. You now Lena's calling out, just wondering where her Ruli went. Ruli says I'm here. Okay, so just scraping off a little bit here and there. I'm really just checking. Right now there's, I see some, some odd, uh, but it's millimeters. It's not a big deal. Okay, the only other thing about Ruli's foot to take note of, oh, she's moving her back foot, is way over in this corner. Oh, she wants, says, can I have my foot back? Yeah. Give Ruli a second to shift her body weight or something. She's got a little bit of a, a crack on the side here. Um, 
No big deal. This was a long time ago. This actually came from all the way up here down. This didn't happen anytime recently. In fact, this is almost a year old, which is pretty close to the amount of time I've been trimming her. <clears throat> so we're probably going to finally get to level that off today. I've been waiting on that for a while. But essentially, when you get these cracks that happen at the back of the foot of the heel there, it usually means they blew an abscess up the back. Not always, though, but in my experience, it usually means that. Okay, let's do some walls. Let's do some walls. All right. Come here, Ruli. Can I borrow your foot again? Covered in hay. Okay, again, so we've got a great wear pattern on the front. Pretty close to center. I'm very happy with that. Just going to come around and check out the foot. I'm going to see, I believe this heel is a little higher than this heel. So I'm going to bring this one to where I think it should be. Check out these quarters. Make sure there's no crap sort of stuck in there. And if there is, I can bring it down. Come along here and just adjust height. I'm just adjusting height. I'm not doing my my correction for uh, anything else. So this heel's a little high. Bring that down a bit. Roll the back. Continue to get rid of this stuff on the outside. I'm just going to switch hands. It'll probably be easier to see. And come along with my rough edge. Very little off this side. This side needs a little less than the other side, balance-wise. And I'm checking that by looking at the sole. Now I take my fine side and I'm going to start sculpting this thing. And we've almost got this grown out. I'm very happy with that. Okay, let's come around like this and we'll try to match up but not scrape off the toe. You scrape off the toe, you get an inaccurate measurement. Okay, bring that around like so. That's looking kind of roundy like that. Let's do the other side. Now I'm going kind of slow for the video, but usually I'd probably be already on the back feet by now. So that's fine though, right? Take my time. This might be the pace that you'd do it if you were learning. And that'd be just fine. You don't have to be these whippersnappers out there that get feet done in 20 minutes. Which practically seems impossible to me. You're sculpting, you're looking at it. You're, it's like doing fine woodwork. It's no rush. No rush. Okay. Whatever that means to you guys. I think her foot's actually pretty much done. I like and all that business. Come down from the side. There's all that stuff on the way. She's doing pretty good on this foot. I'm mostly happy with it. Same sort of uh, deviation in the toe that I think can be brought back. Again, it's millimeters. Well, it's just millimeters. So, okay. Uh, front feet are done. Okay, my back is leaning down sometimes for these camera shots. All right, moving on to the back feet. Really, we'll probably be quite happy to see this bit trimmed off, but I bet she only notices it's kind of like a, a bit like a hangnail, I guess, in a way where you kind of catch it on stuff and you think, that's weird. Okay, really, let's uh, let's chuck you in the corner, way in the corner. If you could move over there, I'd appreciate that. Good girl, a little bit forward. Okay, pet her. Tell her she's good. Ask for her foot. She says, "I'm not ready. I was ready for the other one, maybe." Okay, we'll give her a second. I can't stress enough. You must be gentle with horses. That holder. And fragile in the back end, and sometimes you got to trim way over here, and that's okay. That'd be okay. See, she's sort of relaxing down. She's got my knee to rest on a bit. These kinds of horses can be a little more tiring, but just bend your legs. I really want to get this stuff out of here. So I'll dig away a little bit, and she's doing fine. So what I'll do here, see if she'll relax into me a little bit more. It'd be nice. I'll grab my knife while I've got her. I'm just going to wiggle her hawk a little. See if she can relax this foot down a bit. 
just wiggle her down a little, see what happens. She might not, and I'm not gonna blame her for it. So if she doesn't do it, I just say, that's okay. That's okay. Again, we're checking out the bars, seeing if there's anything weird stuck in there. And uh, oh, let's just chuck the hay bag over. Really, don't do that. Leave it over in the corner for me, please. Look out. There, go over there. Can you, well, that's inconvenient. Really, can you move your butt over a little, please? Good girl. That's, that's plant, that's, that's too much. Not that far, just a little bit this way. Whoa, this isn't a leading situation. Back up, good luck. Back up, back up, back up, turn around. So what if I bugged you a bit? It's good for you. Just come eat. There you go. Okay, well, we better just move the camera then. Now, again, this is not, you know what? I changed my mind. I could accommodate for her, but I'm not going to because we did this with Lena and she escaped and really has almost escaped. So I'm just gonna have her head come up. I need her over and then this way, move your butt over, please. Good girl, really. Okay, so now that she's figured out where to be, I'll put the lead rope on this side so I can get to it. And we're back, trimming. Hopefully you guys can see whatever the heck I'm up to. That girl really, can I please have? Thank you. All right, so we're just checking out some old stuff here. Old frog, trimmed it off a bit, not a lot. Really still growing out some, some old stuff that I hope to rid her of as time goes on. But it's just a little that needs to come off. Not a lot. She had a pretty big trim last time and uh, I took off quite a bit of the, the bottom that was really overgrown. I put a couple of pictures up on the Patreon channel for those that are coming from there and uh, gave a pop quiz on what do you think this is kind of thing. That was really good. That's it for the bottom. I don't need anything more there. That's it. Just clean it off, check it out, make sure there's nothing stuck and continue to let bad stuff grow out. Now, Ruby's moving in the wrong direction again. So I'm just going to move you guys over here so you don't get stepped on. Get rid of that thing and make a correction. Really? You're gonna finish off this whole bag. Come here, big girl. I know. Holy crunchiness. Can you move your butt over, please? That's good, right there. That's good, right there. Good girl. Okay, stick with me. There you go. I like it's a hard life there, big girl. So that's perfect. That's exactly where I want her. She's a good horsey. Okay, moving on. Let's get rid of this big thing that I'm sure some people are going, what are you gonna do for that? Not much, just gonna shave it off. So she doesn't need any height done on this foot at all. I don't need to trim height anywhere off of this thing. It's good, she wears it nicely. So what we're gonna do in this case <laughs> is exactly what I said to do earlier, is trim from the front. But the only reason I'm trimming from the front is because if you trim this stuff off here, from the bottom, there's a tendency to go upwards. You see how it's going up? So I don't want that. So I'm just going to trim like that. And that's it. I want that smooth. I don't want anything catching anymore. The separation between two sets of walls is, is uh, what causes that. A little bit of rot in there. I want that to go away. So I'm going to do the same for her other side. And then I might as well just round off the edge a bit. But I'm not trimming any height. There's no height to be trimmed from the front at all. Just giving her a roll. Okay. Let's 
not bad. I'm just gonna do just a smidge more. Actually, I'll show you why I'm gonna do a smidge more. You see, right here, it's still got a little flaky bit there. I'm gonna remove that. So here we go. Come here, really. I need your foot again. Thank you. She's a little bit Rice Krispies. Maybe she's got a little snap, crackle, and pop when she does stuff. Light. I mean, if I could use sandpaper, I would. I don't want to take off much. But I need to get this to grow out or off and not continue to flake off like that. So this is sort of the last of a little bit that's been in there for a while. So that's a little bit better. I'm much less worried about that little bit there. And then this part right here is where I'd get worried for a horse a bit, but that foot's done. Last one. And I should put you guys here maybe. If we're lucky, that'll be good. Please really, oh, I don't have my, Oh, hoof pick. Passing through. Please. Good girl. Okay, I'll put you guys over here somewhere for safety. A little good cleanings. Hmm. Interesting deviation of the bars. Let me check that out with a knife. Now I'm sort of trimming a little upside down here. But I want to get these bars a little straighter. Not much. I'm only making a minor change to this. There. Okay. So that's good. Well, the frog is pretty decrepit on this side here, so I'm just going to take this off. And again, no indiscriminate trimming of frogs, please. We trim off what looks like it's going to come off. And from there, leave it. Let's get this here. A little bit soft in the back. Probably because there's some old stuff here, so I'm gonna trim out that middle bit. Yep. Make sure there's nothing under there. Nothing weird growing. When they get soft like that, I get a little worried. But she's not too bad, so I'm, I'm encouraged. Okay, you guys probably can't see this so well. She's brought her foot way forward. <laughs> End up. Really? That is super inconvenient, girl. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Here, can you uh, come into the corner a bit more? Don't leave. Go forward. Good girl. Okay, checking wall length. I guess you guys can come over here a bit more now. She's moved. All right. Wall length is good. There's nothing to trim off of here. So again, we're going to go to actually just a little bit more. Now I'm doing this because I can see that there is a, uh, a bit of a crack underneath there. And so I don't want stuff to stay stuck in there. So this will help her bar grow down straight and, and out and not lay over and trap stuff in. Essentially like a sliver does. To the front. Okay, so again, we're just taking off edges, giving her a little bit of a roundy round. Edge. Come on, really. You can relax now. Good girl. So I'll rest like this. I can rest like this for quite some time. 
Wow, that's a lot of glow in here. It's like I applied a glow filter, but I did not. Okay, so we're taking off this edge here. She doesn't need. And make our way around. Shape is good. I don't need to reshape or do much. Now I'm using the fine edge. And I'm just going to round off this stuff so she stops with any chipping, hopefully any cracking. Now I'm done. That is complete. So take my stuff off and we'll go over this and then I'll answer some questions if there are any. Let's take a look close up. So there you can see all I've done is bottom quarter inch or so. Little roundy round. Shape is good. I'm happy with that. And same with the other side. Taking this off. And then uh, this little bit here will grow out just fine. That'll be good. She'll wear that out herself when she goes and plays in the sand and stuff. So I'm going to chuck her out and then we'll uh, do some questions. So be patient with me while I throw her in the arena. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, really, you've done really well with that. Why don't you... Uh, Come this way with me, please. Good girl. Come along. You're going to have a little roly poly. Good. Goodbye. Get yourself a drink of water. After all that hay, I'd expect, yeah, drink of water. I had a whole bunch of cookies. I didn't want to drink of something. Okay, I'm coming back. Don't need Stays there. Never know. Emergency could happen. I catch that horse. Where's the halter? Oh, I put it away. What you that for? I don't know. I actually kind of talk like this when I don't even have the camera on. Just talk to myself. Okay, let me find a up to rest. What the heck? Why don't we? Last time I did this. Th it was no good. The internet connection sucked. So let's go. Let's go over here. Let's burn in a couple of things this morning real quick. So it's kind of like fireside chat, but it's not. Okay, actually I'll flip it around. And here I am. Horses are good. Check around, make sure everybody's good. Whew. Okay, uh, it's a horse trim or a hoof trim. Horse hoof trim. Questions? Let's see what you. So, you know, an average, an average hoof trim is anywhere between thirty minutes and forty-five to an hour, depending on how much you have to do. And it might be more in depth. You might have to be more precise or it might be just something simple that you're just doing more maintenance really was a little bit more of a maintenance trim today quite happy with with how that went to be honest so all right so uh let's see oh hello lisa 
Uh, Andrew, I said hello, Twinkie. Hello. Oh, you made it. You sent a message saying you don't get uh, notifications, but you made this one. That's good. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Let's see. Brenda's here from Texas. Yeah, you got a notification. That's good. Her feet look great. Danielle, it's true, actually. Really, his feet. Um, I mean, you're part, you're, you're part of the Patreon thing, right? That was her foot that I showed a picture of that I had taken off all that uh, sole. Um, a little bit of smoke coming my way here. <sighs> Come on. I just sat here. Kind of smells nice. It's not too bad. Um, a bear. So yeah, her feet do look pretty good. Um, oh, right. Is that what they're called? A woolly bear? I don't know what they're called. Uh, we get quite a few of them here. So, uh, yeah, her feet have come a long ways. When she first came, she had um, problems. It's hard to explain exactly what they were, but mostly uh, I feel that it was uh, uh, um, some bruising, uh, an abscess that was unrecognized at the time maybe. Um, no idea what causes these things. You just treat them and, and fix them and rehab them and stuff. Uh, Twinkie says, uh, I was going to ask about chips like that, so you just let it grow out then. Well, you've seen the end of the trim now. Um, chips and cracks. Well, cracks are different. Chips like that or, or uh, where, because the wall itself is quite thick. I mean, some are much thicker than others. Lenas are almost an inch thick from sole to outer wall. They're very close to an inch. Um, whereas, say, uh, let's see, Peggy's are a little thinner. And macaroni's are a little bit thinner. Luke's sort of halfway. Uh, who else have I got here? Gracie. Hers are quite thick. She's got great feet other than that issue. What else have I got? I've got Sky. Sky's got thick walls as well. So <clears throat> there's a lot of layers to the walls. And the outer quarter inch to half inch is, depending on the thickness, I guess quarter inch is probably the best thing to go with right now. Maybe maybe a little less for some of those thinner hooves. It's quite hard. And uh, so when it sort of cracks off like that, um, it's fine. But what it really means is that uh, it didn't, it wasn't being rounded off before an edge caught and then chipped off. It's like um, a piece of wood. I mean, hooves are a lot like wood. That's why I say, you know, you're shaping and sculpting them and you're, you can sand these things. Because um, it really is a lot like that. You're, 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 there's a craft to it. There's pure science as well, but there's a craft to it as well um, that I'm constantly trying to get better at. <clears throat> so. Martine's here. Hello, Martine. So yeah, so Twinkie, the uh, um, it's funny calling people by their YouTube names, but anyways, I don't remember everybody's name. I'm not sure if you've told me, but um, but things like that, like those types of chips, they grow out in no time. In fact, they shouldn't even be there in the first place. When you take them off, the hoof just looks normal again. And you're like, oh, that looks normal. There's nothing wrong with that. The bigger problem is when they go farther up or they go deeper. So that's where you get into the cracks. Um, cracks can take quite a while to grow out, especially if they go anything further than halfway through the hoof wall. Um, so I'm gonna do a whole series about this stuff. It's really, it's really a big deal. Like I was saying, for everybody that feels like they'd like to watch horses play all the time, I mean, these guys wouldn't be running around playing if, uh, if they couldn't, you know? So their feet, feet matter. Everybody want, people wanna learn this stuff. So here we are learning about it. Um, really is love her frosty coat. Me too. She's a good looking horse. Um, she's a good girl. Yep. Everybody agrees. She's a good girl. Hello, Brenda. Um, cracks can take a long time to grow. And sometimes you can be a little bit too conservative with a trim and maintain a crack. <laughs> if you don't trim them, then you're going to definitely maintain those cracks if not make them worse. So there's a lot of cases where you have to be sometimes a little bit more aggressive. When I first started trimming Sky, for example, he had this massive crack and uh, his owner was very worried, very concerned, very worried. And I said, don't worry, it'll all just grow up. We'll maintain this, we'll trim every couple of weeks, and um, 
it'll be fine. Anyways, so. Martine says, what happens to the cracks? Hello, Sally Ann. Sorry to skip by you there for a second. What happens to the cracks to the heel and consolidate naturally? Only if maintained correctly. If you do, um, it's kind of like a, a zipper. Cracks are like a zipper. Probably the easiest way to put it. And um, say you, you have a zipper that breaks at the bottom. And the reason it broke at the bottom is because you sat down and your coat's a little long and your legs kind of come out and the zipper comes up. If you were to maintain your legs sitting in that position or you sitting on the coat, the zipper is going to continue to it's going to continue to go, especially if you sit down further or you open your legs, legs wider. But we all know if you were to close your legs or you were to lift up the jacket, and not sit on it anymore, the zipper would stop breaking upwards. Um, and uh, that's how you heal them up. You make sure that you're not sitting on your coat and it's not uh, on your legs and your legs aren't coming apart. So cracks are the exact same thing. Um, they are 95% of the time caused through very poor trimming or slightly poor, late uh, trimming. They are not normal. Sometimes it's by diet. A lot of people swear by it that it's diet, but I'm, I think some of those people don't trim those and they'd like it to be the diet. And sometimes it's some diet. So something to think about. Okay, where are we next? Um, Twiggy says, thanks for taking your time. Love, love to watch and learn. Thank you. That's great. It's great to hear. Perfect. Thanks, Sue. Perfect place to board your horse, she says. Ida's here. Hello, Ida. No, it's not Gracie. This one's really, of course, somebody already answered you. Uh, she looks well behaved. Really is very well behaved. She's a very nice horse. Um, it's my understanding that since coming here, and I'm not trying to uh, forget it. Anyways, she's really good. She's good. Um, two ways to two ways to a horse's heart: kindness and food. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kindness goes so far. Kindness, respect, uh, food will definitely assist. Safety is a big one. So, yeah. Your back must need some some Bengay or something. Uh, no, actually, my back needs more stretching more than anything. <laughs> it's so rarely. I need to stretch more often. I tend to only stretch when I'm getting stiff instead of before I start to get kind of stiff legs or arms or shoulders or back. Um, so I don't know. What are you going to do? Uh, but for the most part, I, I use my knees a lot. And um, instead of leaning over so much, I'll be a little bit straighter and stronger. Uh, and over time, you get quite strong for it, for this. In the beginning, I was pretty tired. I was doing it wrong. So it's like working out at the gym. <clears throat> if you're doing things wrong, you're going to feel pain in places that you shouldn't be. Uh, let's see. Twinkie says, I've never had the courage to put things in the mouse like you do. Just say it. Um, well, try it. <laughs> uh, just don't get caught in those front teeth. The back teeth are really hard to get caught it and I I also um, in the beginning I wasn't very comfortable with uh, having my hands in the mouth of a horse um, but they don't have a lot of power to pull your fingers in it's just their front muzzle sort of has that the side has almost nothing um, but when I watch my veterinarian reach back and go inside of the mouth I think uh, <laughs> I keep wondering if he's gonna come out with crunched fingers he never does so one day I'll get to that uh, Ida says I'm working hard thanks I'm trying to when trimming, you should wear a special soft belt to hold your vertebrae to protect your back because you might damage it if the use comes hard work. Yeah, uh, actually, I see a lot of uh, aprons and they have no back support. They're just a belt. It's just a belt. I think it's nuts. Mine has a big back support on it, um, which helps um, a little bit, I think. I, I'd almost think I wish I had something with a little, little more stiffness uh, or padding, um, but it works well. It's better than just a belt. Let's put it that way. Uh, so he says, is it important to file in one direction or does it matter? Yes, it matters. Um, you definitely want to go as best as you can with the grain for when they're chipping and stuff. Because just like wood, if you were to um, file wood in the wrong direction, um, up against the grain, instead of down and with the grain where the release is, instead of you going up against the pressure part of the grain, you can definitely chip further. Not necessarily. Hooves are very interesting because they're moist. It's not quite like wood. So the difference between hooves and wood is that wood is usually quite dry. 
Um, but the moisture in the hoof and the oils and the fact that it's alive um, helps keep it together. So you can sort of get away with it sometimes, um, but you want to concentrate as best as you can to go with it, uh, especially for your finishing. Uh, in the beginning, you might not. Like when I always trim from the bottom, I am going against things. Um, but in the end, I will come around sideways a little bit and other times from the top I'll come down a little bit so it works better looks better higher quality <sighs> Martin says I thought about when I watched some of those position oh yeah okay that's talking about the back thing so uh, Twinkie you watch the older videos that's good um is it exhausting with many horses to trim yeah uh, somebody asked me how many how many horses do you trim in a day I think the maximum I feel like I can do is five. That's a lot. It's 20 hooves, right? Um, if they're easy horses, it might not be so bad. If there's a couple of hard horses in there, I'll definitely take a break in between. Because um, if you think about it, if each one of them was an hour, it's five hours of sort of hard labor. So um, depending. Some of them are quite easy. Really, it's not bad at all, actually. You know, I don't feel tired or Gracie's staring at me drooling into the water bucket backwash horses anyway so um okay it can be tiring but some of them are really easy some are not tiring at all and some are very very as i said you come off of it and you're sweating <laughs> ah. especially in the summertime okay um how far up inside the hoof would the flesh be sorry for the silly question definitely not a silly question this is a biological question biology is hard um, they don't teach so much of this stuff in many places when it comes to trimming. Uh, I don't think, I, I, like I said last video, I think I talked about this in farrier ship uh, classes, uh, especially local ones. They don't teach the biology much at all. Um, so how far up inside the hoof would the flesh be? So I'm not sure if we need it up. I think it was just how far inside the hoof would the flesh be? So every, every hoof... Um, has different thicknesses and you can see the thickness at the bottom when you're looking at the bottom most of the stuff that we saw there the bottom of the hoof um, you can see how thick they are so that's how far <laughs> once you get past that you're into the uh, the dermal and the epidermal layers of the um, hoof and so those to the dermals on the inside, the epidermals on the hoof wall side, and they attach kind of like Velcro is the best way to put it. When you get to that layer, you're in trouble. You're... I saw a picture, actually, I don't know if any of you guys pay attention to hoof stuff on Facebook or something, but there's a picture going around of a horse that had sloughed off both of its back feet. And it was gross. I mean, I gotta admit, I was, I was pretty taken aback. I didn't understand at first until I saw two hooves off to the side of the horse. I mean, two hoof capsules and then blood and stuff. And that horse had sloughed off its hooves. Um, so that, when that happens, it really means that the epidermal or dermal layers had totally disconnected. Some people call it laminitis or founder, but those two layers had totally disconnected and said, I can't, I can't hold on any longer. This is no good. Um, get rid of it grow a brand new one down these the ones that are on here right now are garbage uh, i would imagine that horse was put down i don't know how it was standing it was so weird um, but you really want to pay attention to the thickness because you can't you can't trim beyond it obviously but you don't even want to trim close to that and so one of the things i explained in another video i did and i'm definitely going to consolidate the stuff probably one of these days um, that horses hooves have a thick part or a, a hard part and a soft part. And it'll be pigmented and non-pigmented. The non-pigmented stuff is quite soft. You could cut it with a butter knife if you wanted to. Um, and there's plenty of horses out there that people come along and they trim from halfway up the hoof and they just, they scrape it off to make the foot look like it's supposed to look. That's what I don't, that's what I was explaining. We don't trim from the front. Um, except for the cases that you saw. And so 
So we don't need to make the foot look like a foot. It'll get there. It just might take time. The more you shave off that stuff on the front. So then it goes in line with this question, how thick is that? Well, if you've gone past pigmented, pigmented hoof wall, you've gone about halfway for sure. And if you go beyond that, you're even further. And uh, the just like our nails on our hands, underneath our nail the skin is very, very sensitive skin. So horses are the same. Uh, Twinkie says, I make it look like a pro. Uh, Mike, Mike, I'm a pro? I make it look easy. Yeah, I don't know. With, I mean, thousands of moves I've done, and, and you just, I'm still learning. Don't, you know, for whatever it's worth, every time I trim something, I'm always really, really thinking it through. Try not to uh, take it for granted about what I'm doing. So, Ooh, Martine and Twinkie, thanks for the thumbs up stuff. Susan's just come back from doing her nails. <laughs> what a coincidence. Uh, really does have good hooves. It's nice. You can grill chestnuts. Oh, you mean like on the fire kind of thing? Yeah, well, the squirrels can steal them all. Sally Ann says, what would you do with a vertical crack on the outside that runs up to the coronet? Sally Ann, that's a good question. <clears throat> Cracks that run up or into the coronet? That is my question. You have to answer that one first, maybe because I'd end up giving two different answers. I might give that if I, let's see. Uh, I don't have very many more questions. Okay, so let me, um, let's see. Twinkie says it's Karen. Oh, hi, Karen. Yes, of course. Yes, right. I shall remember that. Uh, Okay, so let's answer the question because we only got a couple questions or a few questions. And most of them are from Twinkie. <laughs> Karen. Okay, uh, what would you do with a vertical crack on the outside that runs up to the coronet? Um, <clears throat> cracks, no matter the crack, I would treat them the same, actually, come to think of it. But I'd also want to know the depth, and I also want to know if I can solve it anyways. So the simple thing for... Uh, for any crack that runs all the way to the coronet so for example some horses will damage their hooves or feet because they ran into a fence or i don't know they did something and they've broken the coronet band um, and so the problem there is that hoof wall cannot grow down uh, properly so um, there will always be some crack on the outside but doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be one on the inside in fact, most of them do not have a crack on the inside because the moisture retaining um, keratin, um, the hoof horn, bonds on the inside. It's kind of like uh, an epoxy, it's really strong epoxy. And it'll run into each other and the cellular structure will say, hey, I, I know you, I like you, let's be together and be friends. <laughs> I don't know how I come up with these analogies. I just came up with that one. So they become friends and they're good buddies and stuff like that. But the, the, the separation at the top still exists. So you've got a weakened part of that horn that travels down like straight down. Wherever that may be, it doesn't matter. So what you have to do is you have to, you have to resort back to simple physics in that, like the zipper thing, is how do you stop the zipper from going out further? Well, you don't make a change where the zipper is breaking. You make a change on what's causing the zipper to break, and so you do your best to maintain, especially for the ones that go past the coronet band, you really need to stay on top of making sure there is no physical uh, leverage that will force that zipper apart. So more timely trims. For cracks that do not go beyond the coronet band, trim them properly for a year, maybe a little less, you'll be fine. Again, same concept as a zipper. Easiest way I could explain it. So, no big deal. It really depends on how deep these things go too, because you have to be concerned about whether or not anything's kind of growing in there. And there is a chance that you might have to open it up a little bit and then treat it. Straight bleach. Kill whatever's in there. Don't let it live there anymore. Uh, Twinkie says, Graham, is it safe to say their hooves are like fabric? When the run starts, you treat it like that, like a run in nylon. Yeah. Um, 
and I'd say that these solutions that exist out there where people use hoof clamps and crap like that, um, you can tape up a set of nylons all you want, but you're highly dependent on the tape, the, ni the nylons holding to the tape, right? <clears throat> so if that bond isn't strong enough, they'll just continue to rip underneath the tape. So without removing the physics problem of the pressure, you'll never get a solution. So if you're already going to move, remove the physics problem of this of problem to be the solution, then these hoof clamps and other crap that hold hooves together, um, you just end up making more holes. So patience, mostly patience. For solutions like that, it's usually because there's a lack of available time and you sort of have to rush it, but you end up having to fix something else anyways. Um, Cause you just make holes in the hoof and uh, it's not what you want. But some really bad hooves though, I mean, there are some really bad ones that they require real extra care. So I wouldn't say it's totally out of the realms of usage, but very small use case. That's a good way to put it. So I would love another video on teeth. I got to get my vet out for that. I suck at teeth. I am not, I am not the guy yet for teeth. I tried so hard. I've got a whole book about that stuff. And my vet's an expert. He's, he's a teeth and hoof man. He's got a guy that does surgery. So they specialize in their areas. And uh, so I'll see if I can't, I got to get my horse's teeth loaded soon. I'll see if he wants to do a video with me. Is that moisture like oil in their hooves? It's not oily, no. So, um, but I bet there's natural. I would say there's probably some natural oils that aren't oily, but they do inhibit moisture from entering kind of thing. So um, if you took a cross section of a live hoof wall, I would imagine you'd find something like that in there. But for the most part, it's just impervious through maybe a little bit of oils, but the moisture is just natural, comes from whatever filters through from the blood cells. So, um, Maureen, oh, thank you. Milk and cookies for Haley. She's at school right now. Uh, I wanted to bring her in for a video soon. Uh, and she's kind of been asking. She's off and on with this stuff. So I don't, I don't necessarily ask her or force her or anything. God, Zeus is yelling at me. Just give me a second here. I gotta be good. I'm scraping at the... Look at him. <laughs> you guys can't see him. I just said, look at him, but I didn't bring the camera with me because what does he want? What do you want? Come on then. Come on. Hey, come. Let's go. Come on, let you go. You know what you want. Come on, come say hello to everybody. Might as well. So that's um yeah. So anyway, so Haley is uh she's off and on, but I don't I don't force her into anything. She wants to do something and. We come and do it. If not, then we don't. But thank you. Yeah, she's fun. She likes your Zeus. It's a good dog. Hangs around a lot. Okay, so let's see what else we got in here. Sally says it was interesting. Thank you. Zeus wants his five minutes of fame. He does. So that um, that concludes. I think unless anybody else has any more questions, um, hoof trimming. Again, it, there's a there's a lot of science, and I always encourage people to do a heck of a lot of studying and understanding of why. Uh, but some of it really is about you know being cautious and careful and and doing things in a way that uh, is quality. And uh, it doesn't always you know even though there's so many of them, so many people out there that do go. You know, it doesn't go far from me. It just stays, hangs out. 
God, it's such a nice day today. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't mean you have to you have to rush at all. Just take your time. So anybody that wants to learn, literally, just take your time. You can, you can even do almost one hoof per day. I mean, depending on how bad they are. But it's just maintenance. Yeah, one a day, one an hour. You can do it with sandpaper. So, anyways, that's about it for now. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed um, watching that. Another different set of hooves, different than Linus. What else have I done on I don't know who else I've done that I've trimmed live here. Did I do Luke? I can't remember if I did Luke live. I know I did him with the time lapse. Can't remember now. Maybe Gracie. Maybe I did Gracie. So, speaking of Gracie, everybody's really uh, liking the video I put up yesterday about um, training with her briefly. Uh, so thank you for all the comments. I'll get back to you guys, I promise. Uh, but it was it was really good. It was a good. It was something that I thought I could really explain quickly. Um, that it's all about, it is mostly about the human. And uh, and you can make a horse that's troubled look really good. Um, I, I have plenty of experience in that area where people, I think I've said I show up to, and it's related to hoof trimming. I'll show up to trim a hoof or a horse, <laughs> trim a horse, one hoof. I'll go to trim a horse. Oops, Zeus has got a pair. What'd you get, buddy? You bringing me a pair or are you eating it? He says, no, it's mine. All mine, mine, mine. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the uh, the people will will look at me and they'll say, well, I have to be careful. My horse, he sometimes gets upset and bites or rears up or whatever. And I said, that's okay. And I'll just kind of slowly go about doing my stuff. And and they'll say, well, where did my horse go? Where, whose horse is this? <laughs> Hey, just because I approach them a little different than what somebody else does, doesn't mean your horse is any different. So, okay. Um, questions are done. It's good. Thank you again, Maureen. I will tell Haley uh, how generous you were. And we will pick up. Because she's actually, funny story. I finished off the stream with this funny story. Every time we go shopping, I always take grocery shopping with me when I go. <clears throat> um, I think it's good for, it's... Uh, a father thing, I guess, whatever. Or my father thing. I don't know if it was about a oh, father thing or it's me as a dad. I think it's a great idea to take her grocery shopping every time we can. Even if she's like, I don't want to go. And I say, I don't want to go either. But there's this old Llama Llama book. And if you guys have ever, anybody has kids have heard of these books. And uh, it's about uh, llamas. It's a mama llama and a baby llama or a kid llama. And they're shopping for groceries. And the baby llama's freaking out in the cart and starts chucking everything. And uh, Mama Llama comes over and she gives the baby a hard time. So what are you doing? Don't do that. And she says, you know, I don't like shopping either, but at least we're together doing it. And I thought, oh, I really like that. And I, I'd always been doing it, but never really quite knew exactly what exactly. I mean, I thought I was teaching good habits. You got to go grocery shopping for your whole life. So you might as well get good at it. And, uh, you know, learning where the sales are, what to buy, what's healthy, what's not, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, it's kind of like, Hey, at least we're together not enjoying something. <laughs> Misery loves company. That's the more of the llama llama story. Uh, anyways, so um, we're shopping for food. And uh, um, uh, every time, every time we go down the cookie aisle, she's pushing and pulling. And the funny thing is the cookies aren't for her. They're for me. <laughs> but I'm trying to cut out my cookies. So she's trying for me to not cut out my cookies. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, funny story at the end. That's it. Um, uh, leave it at that. And uh, thanks, Kathy, for the ice, moist heat, chiropractor, posh, back support. Um, I'll be all right. I'll just stretch some. So thanks, everybody, for coming in. Great questions, great comments, great participation. I love it. Thank you very much. Um, I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Who else have we got to trim? We got to take off Gracie's boot. So maybe we'll do that. We'll see how things go tomorrow. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks, guys. Have a good night, morning, afternoon, evening, lunch, dinner, breakfast, whatever. I think I'm going to have lunch soon. I think it's pretty close to lunch. All right, that's it.